Serious, what is the scariest thing to happen to you when you've been home alone? The lights turned off all at once while I was in the kitchen. It was pitch black. I heard the door open. For some reason instead of thinking power outage my brain went to someone has cut the power and is coming to kill me. I grabbed the landline, the knife and was crouched behind the kitchen counter hearing steps come through the house. Trying to breath as quietly as possible. Then I hear my mom go hello, anyone home? The power went out by chance at the exact moment she came in the door. That would have been an awkward hospital trip. Just imagine walking into your own house not knowing that a family member is about to stab you from the dark. My girlfriend and I both travel a lot for work, pre-covid, so it's not unusual for only one of us to be home on any given week. Last fall she was in San Francisco and I was home alone for a few days. We live in an apartment on the top floor of a building. Above us is a roof with a deck available to everyone. Middle of the night I get up to use the bathroom and on the walk back to bed I look over to the study. There's a sliding door in the study leading to a balcony. I immediately stop dead in my tracks. I see the outline of a person standing on my balcony facing me. I run over, hit the lights, grab a knife from the knife block and start dialing 911. The person is a kid no more than 16. He sees me hit the lights, grab a knife and my phone and he immediately grabs the railing on my balcony and flings himself over. I run over assuming I just watched someone kill themselves only to see him safe and sound on the balcony below me. He then hurtles off that balcony. He's jumping from floor to floor. He hits the parking lot in the back of our building safely and then sprints off. Cops finally come and break up a party on the roof. Turns out he was just a drunk friend of someone on the second floor and got dared to do it. Also shout out to my dog for being asleep 15 feet from the balcony and not doing anything. Also shout out to my dog for being asleep 15 feet from the balcony and not doing anything. I have cameras at the entrances to my house. About 10 years ago people broke into the house while we weren't home. When I reviewed the recordings, you see the back door get blasted open by a sledgehammer. Then you see my dog run up, tail wagging. The burglars started petting him. He brought them his favorite toy. Then they moved off camera. I then saw his favorite toy fly past the camera. And then off camera. Then I saw my dog run for it. He played fetch with them. The last thing they did before they left the house was struggle to close the door while pushing my dog back in the house. He still wanted to play. He wasn't a guard dog though. He loved everybody. He was really awesome with my daughter. And that's what counts. I heard gunshots when I was home alone for the first time as a 12 year old. Turns out my neighbor was a murderer. At least 12 cop cars and like 2 fire trucks showed up and I thought it was the end of the world. I was in my basement where the computer was playing some game. Probably RuneScape and heard someone pull into the driveway, naturally assuming it was my mother who was coming home from work. I heard the screen door open but when no one opened the lock on the actual door I started to go upstairs and I saw a pair of legs go by the window, while the basement was underground. There was about a foot that popped up above ground level and had two windows. I go upstairs and see two dudes in my backyard looking at the windows and talking about the door was locked. It was an attempted home robbery. We had been broken into a few times at that point and had everything locked. But 10 year old me was terrified. Not super scary but one time when I was like 11 I was home alone at night and got a call from the local sheriff's office who told me they just had a drop 911 call from this number, my house landline, and asked if I was okay. I didn't call them, nobody else was home to call them, idk it just creeped me out a lot. When I was home alone with my little sister, at the time I was probably 12 or 13 and my mom had just ran to the store for milk. These cops showed up at my door and asked if they could come inside to look around. I was a kid and confused so I said okay, and they later told my mom that the house across the street was just broken into and the man had not been caught and they were lead to believe he was hiding out on a different property somewhere. So they thought this grown man was hiding in my garage or backyard while I was home alone with my sister. My mom never left the house without us again when we were kids. I started choking on a clump of my kikes. Only survived because I tripped and fell on the couch in such a way that it dislodged the candy. I was nearly killed then saved by being a klutz. This is exactly the way they teach you to dislodge food if you're alone. Slam dunk your stomach on the back of a chair or similar. Couch arm back in your scenario. 
Someone tried to break into my neighbor's house while I was babysitting their kids. I was 15 and I used to babysit for my neighbors down the block. They had a really nice house. Three floors with a built-in garage under the house. That connected to the basement. It was the family's most used entrance of the house and they rarely locked the basement door as long as the garage was closed. They also had the type of security system where any time a door opens you heard beep beep beep. After the parents left one night I was putting the kids to bed and I heard the beep beep beep. I yelled out, thinking it was the parents coming back for something but no one answered. The system on the wall kept reading basement door open. I was freaked out so I called my dad and asked him to come by since he was only a few houses away. When he arrived, he told me to stay in the kitchen while he checked the house but before he could, we heard the beep 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 again and then the garage door opened when we ran to the window to see if the parents were pulling into the driveway. They weren't. Instead someone in a hoodie was running out of the garage door and into the woods behind the house. My dad ended up calling the cops. I'm still creeped out by it. I was actually at a friend's house when her parents weren't home. We were maybe 10. It was her, my sister, her sisters and me. We decided to go swimming. There had been a rash of burglaries lately but mostly garages being broken too. Anyway, we were in the pool when we noticed the kitchen light turn on. It was evening. We assumed her parents so looked in the window to do something stupid to get their attention when we realized we do not know the individual in the house. We hid behind the wall of the pool, above ground, terrified until her parents finally came home. It appeared as though he got spooked as he only ransacked the kitchen and left the garage door wide open when fleeing. When I was around 8 or 9, my mum commuted to a major city about an hour hour and a half away. So I would bring myself home from school, about 100m away, lock the door and watch cartoons or play Neopets until she got home. We lived in apartment blocks, and one day one of the older male people in the apartment lost his wallet, and he figured it must have been me. Keep in mind, I've never stolen anything in my life or had any trouble with the law, and I had no clue what he was talking about. He came and banged on the door so aggressively that I jumped out of my skin and was belligerent demanding I open the door. I rang mum crying and she jumped on a train to come home but she was an hour and a half away. She called some friends and they came and got me, and at that stage he had taken a break and gone back to his apartment, but left his dry cleaning there. When mum got back, she stormed straight to his door and pounded on it like he had done to our door. He came to the door, all shocked, and she demanded to know why he thought it was appropriate to bang on the door for an hour to scare a little girl. He replied that he thought I stole his wallet. Mum asked him if he still thought I did, and he said no I found it in the car park. She looked like she wanted to kill him, and forced him to apologize. Also, in that same apartment block, there was a hairline fracture on the sliding door that we didn't know about. A strong wind blew and shattered the entire window inwards. I was home alone then too. That was scary as hell. It was spooky movie night at a friend's and we were three movers deep. Just finished watching Dark Skies. I was hungry so I was like alright getting my leftovers. So I went downstairs by myself. When I closed the fridge I caught movement out of the corner of my eye and when I turned to see what it was there was a ghostly white skeletal thing just staring at me from outside the patio. With shimmering hazy lights pulsing behind it. I f I'm freaked. Dropped my food and run up the stairs nearly in tears babbling about someone or thing in the backyard. Turns out it was just my own reflection mixed with the lights and steam from the hot tub outside but I've never been so scared in my life. Not sure if this counts. Was working on a farm in Northern California. It was a startup and I was the only person. At nights. On an isolated 650 acres. After dinner. Was walking from the lodge to my cabin it's dark so all I can see is what my flashlight illuminates plus a little on the periphery of the main beam. Anyway. Walking back and in the periphery I see red effing eyes staring at me unblinkingly. I turn the light on it and all I see is a pale white mass behind the still red eyes. I freak. Takes a little bit to get me jumpy but this sure as hell did. Picture a 6 feet 5 inches 260 pound man. Now picture him letting out an unbelievably high pitched scream and straight sprinting into his cabin. 50 yards or so. The next day I was talking to one of the guys that come up to help out during the day told him what happened and he about fell over laughing. I think the sincere terror in my voice as I described the pale monster really drove the funny nail home for him. Well, 
Turns out there's such a thing as albino gear and just so happens one frequents this property. Nobody thought to warn me beforehand. I was watching some sort of ghost TV show about demons or something in my basement. Home alone when I was probably 14 or 15. A refine turkey walked up to the sliding door and started tapping on the glass. I noped the f out of that basement so fast. I don't think I ever watched that show again either. My grandparents paid me to house sit for them and take care of their animals. Two dogs, two goats and like three or four horses. For two weeks. One of the dogs was really clingy so I closed the door on him when I went to bed one night. I woke up in the middle of the night but I was too tired to move but I saw a black figure with a white face standing right beside the bed. It was making this horrific growling noise and leaned into me and pressed down on my chest. It pressed harder and harder and then I was able to move my fingers and then I was eventually able to move my body but after that, I let the dog sleep in the room and I slept with the lights on. That was the first time I experienced sleep paralysis and thankfully the times after that one weren't freaky. My house came with an alarm that kept track of movement in every room. I set the alarm before bed, but I woke up in the middle of the night because it was alerting me that there was movement going back and forth between my guest bedroom, down the hall, and into my office. My alarm has a robotic speaking voice, so in the dark I'd hear it say, movement guest bedroom movement second floor hallway, movement office, etc. I assume it was a glitch, and nothing to worry about, but I ended up turning that function off. I also heard human footsteps above me in my attic once, home alone while my wife was out of town, but I posted that one already months ago. It was a hot summer and my parents went to a wedding. I had a project to do and it was like 1am and silent until a random drunk dude crawled in through my window with a bottle and blush face. I was 20 feet away at my desk from the window and we both just stared at each other. He was flustered and said oh sorry there kid wrong house and attempts to leave the way he came. He was drunk and dizzy so I helped him by pushing him out the window. I thoroughly shut it and stared at it for 2 hours until my parents came home. My parents let me walk home from school alone when I was in 4th grade. In my now adult opinion. That's way too young. So I walk home from school. House is empty till about 5 when my parents get home. So I'm doing my usual routine. Mountain Dew Code Red, Doritos 3Ds, and Toonami on Cartoon Network. So I'm only home for about 3 minutes when I hear a knock at the door. 99% of the time I stay quiet and just wait for whoever to leave. But for whatever reason I actually go to the door and call out. Who is it? Stranger dude voice on the other side hey. It's your buddy Mike. I don't have a grown name and buddy Mike. I'm in 4th grade. My shit goes cold. Heart in my throat. Goose bumps. Cannot move paralyzed terrified. Dude says again hey open the door. We gotta go. And he jiggles the door handle really hard. Then he knocks again bam bam bam. Jiggles the door handle hard again. I'm still like 1 foot away from the door. I actually never moved since all of this started because I didn't want him to hear my footsteps. After a minute of silence I heard a car door close and him drive away. I'm still freaked the f out for the next hour. And worst thing was I was now super paranoid about walking to from school because obviously he followed me that day and I had no idea I was being told. Early teen years. Power went out while I was taking a shower late at night. I got out of the shower already freaked out and looked outside through the window. My house was the only one without power. Stupid teenage brain. This is clearly an attempt on my life reality. House had a weird problem where the power would cut out if the water heater and air conditioner happened to turn on the same time. It had never happened to me before that, but my dad assured me that was the problem once he finally came home. For me, I was 12 years old and my dad was at his girlfriend's house. I went into my room to take a shower. I always put a chair under the door handle in my room because it didn't have a lock. My grandma loved giving me porcelain dolls and she decorated my room with shelves that had porcelain dolls on them. All of the dolls were on their shelves before I got into the shower. When I exited my bathroom, one of the porcelain dolls was 10 feet across the room. Face down on the ground. This doll must have flown across the room to have landed where it did. Also, the doll was not broken. Needless to say, my grandma was sad that all of the dolls were packed up and put in the attic for safekeeping. 
I was chillin' in my bed with my dog watching TV and I hear a door shut downstairs. I look out the window of my sister's room cause she had a view of the garage, but the garage was empty. I grabbed a pocket knife and crept downstairs I searched the basement as well as everywhere on the ground floor and found nothing. Went back to my room on edge for the next couple of hours until my family got home. Still don't know what happened. And it couldn't have been wind cause it was winter so we had all the windows closed. Not that scary but a door closing when you're home alone and not even 12 is a little spooky. There had been a scratching in my ceiling for a while. And my landlady was dragging her feet over having it looked into. One night, around 2am, the scratching became so bad it woke me up from a dead sleep. I tried to reassure myself that whatever it was couldn't really get through to me. And I would be fine until I could call my landlady the next day and really press the issue. Then some debris fell from my ceiling whatever was up there had managed to dig a small hole into my room. I screamed, and heard some scurrying away from my approximate location. Grabbed any stuff I needed for the next day. Got the F out of there. Shut the door tight behind me, and slept on the couch. I called my landlady first thing in the morning, and she had someone come while I was at work that day to check it out. A mama raccoon had managed to get her way into the space between the roof and my ceiling and had given birth to litter of kits. The guy speculated that the kits were getting old enough to start wrestling around, and that was likely what led to the hole in my ceiling. Luckily it was just small, the size of a quarter, so there weren't any angry raccoons hanging out in my room when I got home. They were able to safely trap and release the whole little family, but I still started hunting for new apartments asap. I move into my new place on the 1st of May, 